I want to ask a question. Uh, do they get to win today? And who is they? I'm going to get into in just a second. This is only going to take about 10 minutes. But I wanted to get this on the record uh, before anything might happen. So uh, this is the state of Bitcoin price right now. So uh, what would you guys call this? What would this be? What would you call Sideways? this? Sideways? Sideways. Good answer. Anybody else? Maybe. Uh, other correct answers are consolidation, accumulation, all that good stuff. So uh, what I used to do when I did my trading meetups is I would do a poll to see the sentiment of the group. So uh, as a show of hands, tell me this pattern right here that we see, is this a bullish pattern? Raise your hand. It's a bullish pattern we got. Okay, for that. Is it a bearish pattern? Raise your hand. Interesting. Uh, I think it's a bearish pattern. About half and half. Who doesn't know? We all know. You guys are correct. You guys are correct. You don't know from this. This is a 50 50 shot from Whoa. here. This is a 50 50. Now, there's a lot of people out there that have a lot of interesting stories to say about how this is a uh, maybe a, a Wyckoff distribution or there's lots of on-chain transactions and things like that. These stories are very compelling. They're very interesting because they're like some uncommon knowledge that people have discovered. They're conspiracies. They're uh, the little guy against the big guy. But that's the same reason that Alex Jones is popular. I mean, at the end of the day, we still don't know who killed JFK. And GME, which was a big, you know, little guy, David and Goliath versus, uh, you know, the hedge funds. I'll tell you right now, the top performing hedge funds for 2021, the name escapes me, but they won. They're leading, and they were the ones that were long GME. People ask me, are the people that are on Reddit, uh, do those hedge funds, are they on Reddit? I was like, yes, they're our age. They know how to use Reddit. They're all smart guys. So that's not the day that I'm talking about, who they get to win. What I want to show you guys is something that I don't see anyone else talking about, but has been a far better indicator over the years that I've been looking at. And it's the longs versus the shorts. Now, this data right here is not the people that are just holding in a cold wallet or a hot wallet, either one. These are leveraged longs and shorts. These are people that are, they're taking their maybe long two Bitcoin, but they don't quite have two Bitcoin in their account. They have a fraction of that. They're on leverage. And so you'll notice something, the shorts on the bottom are kind of choppy, but the number on the shorts is about 16,000. And the number on the top is about 51,000. So it's about a three to one. But on the long side up there, that's a very interesting pattern right there, isn't it? So there's a lot more three to one people leveraged long than there are short right now. And you can see that as this dip has happened and as this consolidation has happened, more and more people have piled into the long side. So again, show of hands, is this a bullish sign? Is this a bearish sign? Is this not anything you can determine in isolation? There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This doesn't tell you one way or another which way it's going to go either. It just tells you where people have their leverage. And they're pretty, pretty big bullish. I'll do some Q&A in the middle, but let me finish what I'm saying. So. There's been a couple of instances in history that I want to point out to kind of give you some more room for context. These are open leverage positions, okay? Bitcoin. On Bitfinex in Bitcoin, BTC, USD, longs and shorts. At this point on, I think it was April the 18th, 2021, it was historically the lowest point for margin shorts. On that date, if we look up here at the top, it was right around here, right around the top. At the top of the market recently, it was the lowest point for shorts. That would have been a great time for people to be leveraged short at the top, wouldn't it? But instead, what was it? 
the fewest number of people were short. That sucks, doesn't it? That sucks. That really sucks. It's almost like, you know, the herd's not really right. Now, if we look at the lowest point in history for longs, that was on, uh, that was a nice date this year, the 27th of January, 2021, and that was right before Elon's tweet. So it was right here at this nice BTFD moment. This point right here where Bitcoin was back around, well, where it is now, about 3,200, before it made its run up to 65. And what is, oh, you also can't just say Elon's tweet. There's any <laughs> well, this was the one that announced that he actually had begun buying, or Tesla had begun buying it. It happened on this little spike right here. But the point here is this. It would have been really nice for everyone to leverage up their longs right here at this dip, wouldn't it? They would have been able to double their money from here. But instead, it was historically the lowest amount of leverage longs. It's like the best times to take on leverage are when no one's taking on. So, back to my initial question. If we just look at these right here, I'm just gonna leave you with that question. These are all people that are leveraged long. Do they get to win? That is one of the key observations I've made over the years studying the longs versus the shorts. People tend to make really the wrong decisions uh, historically. Uh, there was an instance Back um, here uh, in, let's see, November of 2018, right before this point right here, uh, it was another inversion point. Not saying anything, but I remember having a discussion with a friend who was looking at the longs versus the shorts, and he said, wow, there's almost like twice as many people leverage long at this point versus shorts. I mean, that's, I got to buy. I was like, you know, I'm, I think the contrarian thing might be the best answer to do. And here's the thing. I don't know which way it's going to go. And people that, you know, think they do, say they do. I mean, that, that's great for YouTube clicks and stuff like that. But they end into this, nobody knows. But as a trader, the question you got to ask is, what's the risk to reward? Which side stands to make the most? Because if you get all these shorts liquidated, okay, let's, let's take that side. If you get the shorts to liquidate, let's just say they're all in two to one leverage. Where's their liquidation point going to be? We're just taking some simple numbers, right? So let's just say they got in the middle of consolidation right here. If you're two to one leveraged, if it moves up 50% in your short, you get liquidated. And so your liquidation point is going to be somewhere around 52K. So the question is, what happens, uh, let's go to the end here. What happens when Bitcoin is on the rise as uh, from the low here? Let's see. Okay, so let's go back to, yeah. So if we take this point right here, this is August of 20, uh, 2020. This is when Bitcoin was still kind of hanging out in the 10K range. As Bitcoin was going up, and rising, what were the longs doing? People were fading the move. You know, people were closing out, taking profit as things go along. It wasn't until you know, we start getting into this cycle that people really, really started piling into the longs. So if you do see something coming up to the upside, people are likely going to fade the move and they'll sell as it goes. Go ahead. What's up? What is the point when they'll yeah, sell? I don't know, but you can extract. Well, you got everyone's going to be on different leverage positions. You know, that's, that's not my question. I just wanted to hear if you know, it was around the 50% mark, like shorts. Well, think about it. Like most people are going to take at a minimum two to one leverage. Yeah. And then some people are going to take a lot more. A lot of this leverage could be more non purchase loans. It's not going back into Bitcoin, it's going into buying other things that people just want to buy and spend some of those bridges on. Um, I think, and this is going to make some people uh, maybe roll their eyes, I think institutional money is irrelevant because you don't know what they're doing. 
and what they release to you that they're doing is done to talk their own positions. If you want to know what institutional money is doing right now, I'll tell you what they're doing. They're buying real estate. That's what the big hedge funds. You've got micro strategy. You know, I got Mark. I got so many people that send me uh, Michael Saylor interviews talking about like, oh, you got to watch this, Wes. You don't understand Bitcoin. I was like, yeah, of course he's bullish Bitcoin. He's very, very long Bitcoin. But what they don't also talk about is how he's long on borrowed money. He's issued bonds at a very low interest rate, and that's not a good thing. Having institutional money in Bitcoin is not a good thing. I'm not going to go into all the reasons I think okay. it's a good thing, okay. but one of the reasons is because it starts tying it to the interest rate situation that we have right now, where if they start ticking up the interest rates, there's going to be less money to be put into pretty much everything. I used to believe in the promise of cryptocurrency being a hedge against standard markets, but you saw what happened in March last year. When the stock market tanked, what did Bitcoin and crypto do? It tanked as well. It's because it's a risk asset. And when people and when things got really dicey, when things got really crazy, what did people want? They wanted US dollars. And they sold their assets, their risk assets. They went risk off. So, so, what, happens, so what happens when capital controls go into play and currencies around the world? He's, he's here to make us think. Because like you know, seventy one we went from money to currency. And we'll go from C uh, to C D B central bank digital currencies it'd be like going from currency to coupons. So let me answer that question with this other chart. So Bitcoin is the future. Cryptocurrency is the future. There we go. It is. It absolutely is. But uh, but do you know what else do you know what else was the future? Amazon clearly was the future. And it's had a, quite a, a run. But it was also the future back in the dot-com bubble. Who was I talking to? There you go, right there. So from the peak of the dot-com bubble down to the trough was a minus 94% drawdown. Amazon was still the future. But that isn't necessarily reflected in the price. Go ahead. Well, question or point? Question. Okay. <laughs> are, we are we considering the, the fact that Bitcoin is truly global and that we're really not looking, that, that technical analysis being important, I think is... is, is I'm, not, I'm not using moving averages. I'm just saying that something can be the future. Something can replace the world as we know it, like re brick and mortar stores are on the downside. This was the, we didn't know it at the time, but that was the future of 1999. And if you would have bought Amazon at $100 back then, you would have held all this time, just as if you bought Bitcoin, you'd be okay. But, but wasn't profitable for a long time. That, I think, reflects the Well, <coughs> okay. But is there any difference? This is global. There's no profitability. No one's making money, losing money. It's just how much money is flowing in versus out, and this is completely global. El Salvador, I know it's a ship country, but still. People are going to be putting money into it and, and just growing and growing and growing the average. Yes, it's a great, it's a great store of wealth, yes. It, it, yes, and these countries will only continue doubling every year. Because, Why? Because there are a lot of ship problems. Yeah, but what, what are they using it for? Uh, commerce. You That's doomed to fail. We haven't solved the volatility problem. We haven't we haven't solved the volatility problem. You're mixing subjects here. I was going to say, they want to say right now. So, is there any difference between the dot com bubble and GameStop, right? In the sense that are the 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 longs and the shorts having any material difference in the long term price of Bitcoin? Or are you just watching girls go by? <laughs> Do well. The thing that determines the price of Bitcoin is what someone's willing to pay for it now. Right, which is not Amazon. I mean, it well, is, but there has to be some earnings or some value behind it. You know, there's something behind it. So, are you traders? And I'm saying that in a pejorative manner. <laughs> 
Are you really? Are you, are you people? Are you having any impact on the long term price, or are you just fucking it up in the short term volatility wise? What? Oh, by trading it? Yeah. I didn't. I didn't say I was long or short. I didn't recommend doing anything. I understand, but you see where I'm going? It, it, it's like he, yeah. He missed the first part. He he did a poll and he said you have no idea if it's going to go up or down. And he, he was yeah. 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 No, that's the so thing. Without, I I agree that Bitcoin is the future, but I don't think that the price has anything to do with the future of it. And my point about Amazon is not to make the apples to apples comparison. Right. It's to basically point out that the price of something, the price of an asset is basically just what someone's willing to pay for it right then right. based on everything they know, everything that they believe. And that is what the price of something is. So the utility value of the, the, the I'm going to get to you. I'm going to okay. get you. Uh, the utility value of Bitcoin, that's, that's up for debate. You know, I'm not going to say it's, you know, one thing or another. The fact that you know a book company, you know, excuse me, a, a website that sells books was going to take over the world. No one knew that was going to happen in the future, but it was the future. Do the longs and the shorts add or subtract from the value of Bitcoin, or do they just increase volatility? They increase volatility, and they expose Bitcoin to very risky uh, price swings. Okay. And that was really the point of this. Yeah. It's not to tell people I think it's going to go up, I think it's going to go down. My point is to just expose to people that there is a lot of leveraged interest sitting out there Perfect. waiting to get triggered. Yep. So, so yep. don't overreact. All right, I have a few 1x. Just be 1x. Yeah. Ignore, don't handle. Okay. Um, first, uh, as far as longing, uh, so I, I haven't ventured into longing yet. Uh, I've been investing in Bitcoin for a while. Well, then you're long Bitcoin, but you're yes. long 1x leverage. Exactly. Okay. So uh, he's a no, one xer. Really, I'm a one xer. Yeah. <laughs> knowing, the, knowing the four year cycle, uh, is it is it yeah. feasible to long for like five years? Because I know I can one x sure. If you would have if you would have uh, bought at seventeen k uh, in two thousand eighteen, you'd have almost double your money now. So what fees and what you know? Uh, I guess expenses would that entail? Like am I just am I paying to hold you seamlessly in order to hold that? What he said, what are you willing to take a 75% haircut Don't on your wealth? I mean, here, here's, here's, the, here's the nature of things. So you can buy it now, and a lot of people, they justify hodling, which if you don't know, that's hold on for dear life, because they're, they expect it to be the future. It has come back. This is only the fifth time that you know, Bitcoin has actually done this kind of little moonshot. Um, you know, it's nothing new. It doesn't surprise me. Uh, it's... It's been many times. Now, to your point about it being this being a very voluminous event, that's fine. But you know, I've been doing this since uh, about 2011, so I mean, I've seen all five of them. And it's 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 really the people are different, but human psychology doesn't change. And so you could have your money in Bitcoin, and that's fine. And you could say like, I really believe in this. I'm willing to just ride it out and take for as long as it needs to. That's fine. But my question to people when they make that decision is, would your money be better off in something else? Um, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> knowing the you know, four years. That's, four a four decision. Decision. That's a personal decision. That's a personal decision. It is. Maybe one more question from Doug and then we can run. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I guess maybe the first part of my question would be, your um, graph you originally showed, you said Bitfinex, and you were showing leverage longs sort of being greater than leverage shorts. Yeah. Um, it could be my ignorance here, which I'll freely admit, but Ask away. I was under the impression that leveraged longs largely got washed out in the drop and had not come back given the sort of tepid price action we've seen. I know we're looking at one exchange here. You know, if we, if we take this across all the different exchanges, you know, is this representative, or, or you know, or is this just sort of a a view of one exchange, which maybe doesn't represent the overall leverage long position of all traders everywhere. Bitfinex is just one exchange, but I don't expect things to be much different because if you can go leverage on one exchange, then there's no reason you won't go in others. And the law of large numbers says that people are doing pretty much the same thing. I, I agree with you. I think that most of the people in this recent one, I don't have the data to back this up, so I'm talking completely out of my behind here, but yeah. I think a lot of people, they were on uh, Gemini, Coinbase, Kraken and can you leverage bitcoin on one of these exchanges i don't know i've never used them no so a lot of people are 1x 
and I think that bodes well for yeah. price stability. I mean, really, I mean, we're all sitting here like, eh, biting our nails about it, but what have we done? We've solved the volatility problem. It's a stable <laughs> coin now. <laughs> well, for the last three months. I mean, if you want to buy, and you want to buy like a pretty decent car, it's, you know, you could have had one a month ago and still be the same price. It's fantastic. I don't know what people are complaining about. So. And the other point I wanted to make, um, or maybe question for you, if you tell me if you think this is true, with the one of the reasons I think that it may be true that these leverage long positions um, could be a bearish sign, and these leverage short positions could be a bullish sign, is what, what you typically have are whale level traders that will, when they see the leverage longs get to a certain point, they'll come out and say, I'm going to move a ton of Bitcoin to an exchange, yeah. put a huge sell order out, and cause a panic, yep. and all you need to do is scare the leverage longs a certain amount, drop the market a certain mm -hmm. amount, and then they get liquidated yep. or they panic sell. Yes. And then the, the same bear can then say, I'm going to sell you know, X hundred or X thousand Bitcoin mm -hmm. right now, and I'm going to buy them back. You know, Absolutely. Later, and that's the whole point of me pointing this out to people. Yeah. Don't be on leverage right now. That's pretty much, because it's, it, you're right. So I'm looking at this like, this is a juicy way to trigger a lot of liquidations and dump the price. And it's a major structural risk right now that's going on here.